going to the uh, lectures themselves, uh, let me uh, tell you that, so I do realize that I was very quick uh, the last lecture, uh, and uh, there was a lot of material, uh, but that was a conscious choice. Uh, if you want to come to somewhere, we have to be quick uh, at basics. So. Uh, the good news is that for the next two lectures, no, if, uh, after this one, so for the lectures three and four, uh, this material will not be very important. So you still have some time to catch it up. So, but if you are interested, then please do go to notes and read the details. Okay. Um, I will be still probably quite quick this lecture, but I will also slow down tomorrow. So. Uh, take as, uh, as a good news. In any case, uh, so uh, I have finished the last lecture with the uh, Chang classes, and first we have defined uh, an invariant polynomial uh, for the uh, Lie algebra UK into R, and this was uh, xi is mapped to the determinant, uh, you know, uh, essentially one, plus i over 2 pi psi, right? We have written this uh, as, uh, you know, uh, well, let me put lambda here, lambda to the power k uh, plus c1 of psi lambda to the power k minus 1 plus, and so on, ck of psi. And so uh, what I've said the last time, if we uh, apply those poly uh, polynomials to the curvature, so if uh, A is a connection on a principal bundle P, then we can compute P, uh, so in this case, uh, Cj of Fa, and uh, we can think of this as a closed form on the base manifold, so we can take its cohomology class and this gives us some class in the 2J theorem cohomology of the base manifold M with values in real numbers. So uh, here are some, uh, maybe before going to the properties, so let me also define C, so the total churn class to be the sum uh, C j of p, and j is here from 0 uh, to k, right? Where c0 of p is by definition just 1. In any case, so uh, here are the most important properties. So the first property is c0 of p is 1. So if you wish, this is uh, just a definition uh, for any uh, principal bundle. Uh, oh, let, let me write, so if you have, you know, uh, if you have a principal uh, UK bundle, we can always construct the associated uh, vector bundle where the action of UK on CK is a tautological one. Uh, well, this is now a vector bundle, so let me denote this by E. Now, so I can think of, uh, so I can talk about uh, chain classes both for principal bundles and for vector bundles. And uh, if I take the pullback, so if you consider the chain class of the pullback bundle, this is the chain, uh, so this is a pullback of the chain class of the initial bundle. Now, the set property is, if I take the Whitney sum of two vector bundles, say E1 and E2, take its churn class, this is just the churn class of E1 got the uh, churn class of E2. So you see why? Uh, both principal bundles and vector bundles are sort of equivalent, uh, it's easier to uh, talk some, uh, sometimes about vector bundles, like here, uh, while sometimes uh, it is easier to talk about principal bundles. 
And the last property uh, is that uh, the total uh, chain class of the uh, tautological line bundle of P1 is 1 minus A. So let me define uh, what is going on here. Now, as I said, this is just the tautological line bundle of P1. Uh, now, wh what we know is that the uh, second cohomology uh, of P1, say with Z coefficients, is canonically isomorphic to Z. Uh, and the, uh, uh, you know, the generator here is given just by the uh, Poincare dual uh, of the fundamental class of P1. So uh, here I will normalize so that A is the Poincare dual to the fundamental class of P1. Up to a sign, uh, say, uh, of a point, yes. Um, Right. Okay. Uh, so uh, these are uh, the most basic properties. So uh, this is called the pullback. This is called the Whitney sum. And this is called uh, normalization. Uh, uh, some uh, properties which are sometimes also quite useful are uh, the following. So if you take the J strand class of the dual bundle, this is minus one to the power J CJ of E. And also, if you know that your bundle splits as, say, E1 plus uh, some trivial uh, line bundle of, say, rank R, then the chain class, uh, so the uh, J's chain class of E is zero, provided J is bigger than K minus R. So K here is the, uh, you know, the, the rank, the complex rank of E. Okay. Now this is something that you can easily prove uh, from the definitions, and in fact, uh, I think this is uh, part of the exercises to do this, uh, but what is sort of not quite clear from the uh, definition is the following uh, property. So uh, this is called the integrality of churn classes. Now here is a theorem. Um, if you have, uh, you know, uh, in our ambient manifold M, sub-manifold N uh, of, uh, so let it be closed oriented, uh, manifold, say, of dimension 2j, then the claim is that the integral over n uh, of cj e uh, is an integer. Well, if you wish, what stays here is just the pairing of the uh, homology class of N with the J strand class of E. Now, uh, this is uh, quite uh, striking properties uh, if you start from the definitions that I have chosen 
uh, for defining chain classes. Uh, in other words, uh, wh what this tells us is that the JSTRAN class of E is in the image of, of the integral uh, cohomology uh, of M inside the real cohomology. Now, uh, How can we? Uh, how can we see this property? Uh, so here is uh, one way to see this. Uh, so uh, for this, let me assume that k is one, so that in fact we have a u one bundle, or uh, this is just the same as saying that we have a. Permission line bundle, so let it be L. And the fact is that uh, there exists an N, maybe quite large, and there exists a smooth map F from M to uh, CPN. Uh, with the following property. So uh, the property is that if you pull back the uh, uh, tautological uh, line bundle of Pn, this gives you uh, L. And it's not very hard to construct this map. Uh, so uh, essentially, this is just uh, a very straightforward argument. Uh, but in any case, so uh, let us take this as granted. But what we know is that OPN minus 1 is a subbundle of the trivial bundle CN plus 1. So that we have here uh, a natural connection on this uh, line bundle. And we can easily compute the curvature of this uh, connection. And we can also integrate over P1 of this Fa. Uh, well, if you normalize this appropri uh, appropriately, so uh, I over 2 pi, uh, I think this is uh, minus 1. So here, P1 is just standardly embedded uh, complex line in Pn. Right, in other words, what this tells you is that the first chain class of the uh, tautological line bundle of the projective space. Uh, so the chain class of this lives in the uh, integral co cohomology group rather than the real cohomology group. And by the properties of the chain class, we know that uh, C1 of L is just a pullback of the first chain class of uh, O minus 1 of Pn. And this is then in H2J uh, M with a Z coefficient. Well, uh, to be more precise in the image of the integral cohomology in the uh, real cohomology groups. So uh, for those of you who know uh, uh, definitions of the topological definition uh, of the chain classes, we could have taken this as a definition of chain classes. Uh, so that, you know, if you have a map F, so that uh, the pullback is our original uh, line bundle L, then its uh, first chain class is a pullback of the generator of the uh, second cohomology group on the projective space. And this would be probably even more uh, uh, desirable, or, uh, a little bit, uh, so uh, this definition uh, uh, contains a little bit more information there because we have also torsion classes, but this actually uh, won't bother us too much. Okay, are there any questions to that? Yeah? So is it in this approach obvious that you can only do this for complex bundles? Like how do you see that you need the complex bundles in this general approach? 
Uh, no, you don't need uh, complex bundles here, so it's just easier to describe. You could do this also for real bundles, uh, but then you know uh, this is all very much related, and actually you will see this uh, uh, in the exercises. So no, I mean it's not really important. This is just easier to describe. Okay. So the next thing that I wanted to discuss is the uh, Charles Simons functional. Uh, now, uh, we specialize here even a little bit more. So uh, what we have is a principle uh, SU2 bundle. If you wish, this is just the same as saying that we have a complex rank two vector bundle such that the second exterior power of E is a trivial line bundle. And uh, if we uh, take you know, xi in uh, SU2, then the, uh, the first uh, polynomial that we have defined, so C1 of xi was i over 2 pi trace of xi, but the trace of xi is 0 just by definition. So the first chain class is uh, trivial, and the second chain class, or the second uh, polynomial, is i over 2 pi squared, the determinant of xi, and now uh, you can compute easily that uh, this is for an SU2 matrix, it's just minus one half trace of xi squared. Right, so all in all what we have is uh, one over eight pi squared trace of xi squared. And so, if M is an oriented, say, closed four manifold, then uh, I can identify the force cohomology group of M, say, with real coefficients or with integers, with reals themselves. And the second trend class of P is then just the integral over M of the trace FA wedge FA. Right, up to the coefficient uh, 1 over 8 pi squared. Okay, so uh, now we will uh, use this formula. Uh, so uh, now I will assume that M is uh, a three manifold, which is, uh, maybe let us choose a different notation, so let Y be a three manifold, again, closed, oriented, And <clears throat> I will uh, use the following fact. So the fact is that uh, there is uh, a four-manifold x4 such that 
y is a boundary of this four manifold x. So in other words, what I'm saying is that uh, each uh, three manifold is a boundary of some four manifold. Uh, this is uh, something specific to dimension three, so this is not uh, true in any uh, dimension. But anyways, that's what we have. Uh, and uh, this is fact one. The second fact that I will use is that any SU2 bundle uh, over y uh, extends to x. Right, if, if I have an SU2 bundle over the boundary, I can extend this to a bundle over the whole manifold x. And uh, if I choose a connection A on P, then I will have a connection uh, a, so I can uh, choose an extension of this connection to a connection on the principal SU2 bundle over X. Okay, very good. Uh, so what we can now consider is the Chan Simons functional of A, and I will define this just by this formula. So this is one over eight pi squared, the integral over X, um, trace f a x wedge f a x. Now, of course, here is a question, uh, why is this is well defined? Uh, so in fact, it is not, it does depend uh, in general on the extension. However, if I think of this as a function which takes values in real values mod z, this is now well defined. And it's easy to understand why this is so, right? If I choose any other extension, uh, so now I have two manifolds with the same boundary, I can stick them together to, to form a closed four manifold, and I know that uh, this integral here will take, well, it will take uh, values in integers, so the difference of the two, uh, on the two bits is just an integer, and that's why uh, so if, you, if I mod out by integers, I will have a well-defined number here. Okay, all in all, uh, I mean, uh, this uh, shows a very close relation between the chern simons uh, functional and the chern weil theory. It turns out that this functional can be computed explicitly, and I will give you a formula in a minute. So the outcome is that the uh, Chern Simons functional of A is just one over uh, eight pi squared, again, the integral over Y uh, A wedge D A plus two thirds A wedge A wedge A. So uh, what I'm using here is that any uh, SU2 bundle over three manifold, in fact, is trivial. So I can choose a trivialization. And I can think of the connection just as a one form over Y with values in SU2. Right, and uh, now all uh, these expressions make sense. Uh, yes, of course. Cheers. And, uh, so is the is integral no longer an integral? Is that boundary still? If this uh, integral is not long. Normally the term class are integral, right? I mean, uh, right, this is an integral, but if you are on a closed manifold, and here we have a manifold with boundary, yeah. right? It's not anymore. Okay, uh, so now we have an explicit form of this function, so we can compute its uh, derivative. So if I just uh, compute, 
uh, at the point A uh, on, say, A dot, uh, stands out to be 1 over the 4 pi squared integral over y of fa verge a dot. So uh, from here, we can see uh, immediately that uh, this function has critical points, and these points are where the curvature actually vanishes. Right? So what we have proved is the following proposition. So the critical points of the Chan Simons functional are those connections A where the curvature is zero. And such connections are called flat connections. Uh, that's just a variable. So this is a, a tangent vector to the space of all connections at the point A. Oh. OK, now <laughs> if we, uh, so what we know is that we can apply gauge transformations to uh, connections, and the curvature is essentially unchanged when we apply this. Well, up to you know what to do. But anyway, uh, we, can, uh, we have an action of the gauge group on this space, and we can take its quotient. So let me define m flat to be uh, you know, the quotient of all those a's, such that f a is 0 by the gauge group of our bundle p. And this is called the moduli space of flat connections. So this is our very first example of a gauge theoretic moduli space, and essentially the only example where we have a very concrete description. Namely, it turns out that this space is just the same as a space of homomorphisms from the fundamental group of y into SU2. So SU2 is here, uh, is here really not essential. So this works for any group uh, divided by the conjugations. So it means that uh, if I have two homomorphisms, I can conjugate by a fixed element of SU2, and such uh, uh, homomorphisms are uh, said to be equivalent. OK, in any case, uh, what we can easily see from here is that M flat is compact. And this is really easy to see because the fundamental group of Y is finitely generated. Uh, so we have an embedding of this uh, space into, uh, so in our case, SU2 to some power, say N, modulo SU2. Right, but this is a compact space, so the quotient is also compact. Therefore, this is a closed subspace in here, and therefore also compact. Now, uh, but what we also can prove is that, uh, or what we can see is that M flat is not necessarily a manifold. And moreover, uh, the dimension of M flat uh, is finite, but it can be arbitrarily large. Now, why is it uh, not really a pleasant news? Uh, because, uh, you see, what we are studying, we are studying critical points of, uh, of a function, and generically, we would expect to see a, finitely, uh, a finite set of points. But this turns out not to be the case, at least uh, in the full generality. Uh, in any case, we can show that, uh, or it is possible to show, that we can count, uh, in a certain sense, the number of points in this space. And so the number of points in M flat, at least in the case when this is really a finite set of points, uh, is an invariant of our manifold Y. And this is, uh, this stands out to be the uh, Carson invariant up to some normalization. 
In any case, I don't want to go into details here, uh, but there will be an extra talk on uh, Wednesday, I believe, uh, where you will uh, learn how to define the custom invariant and uh, how to bypass those uh, difficulties that uh, M is not really uh, neither a manifold nor actually a finite set of points. All right. If there, yeah. Um, so, uh, compact in, in this new topology. Uh, say it again. Compact in this new topology. Uh, yes. Uh, so what I mean here, uh, I, I haven't actually defined the topology on this space. Uh, but I could have defined this as a smooth topology. But because of this identification, we know that this is a topological space and has topology induced from this uh, space. Uh, so we consider the one from the SUV the Yeah. Okay, so uh, one more topic that I wanted to discuss today uh, are the uh, Dirac operators. And this is uh, the following uh, thing. So <clears throat> we start first with a vector space. So V uh, is a vector space. Say uh, the dimension of V is finite. And for this, we can construct an algebra in a canonic way, uh, at least if uh, V is in, uh, say, Euclidean. And this is uh, done as follows. So what we do, uh, we take the uh, tensor uh, algebra of V, that is R plus V plus V tensor P and so on. And we divide this by an ideal generated by the uh, relations uh, V tensor V is minus norm of V squared. Right, and uh, what you can easily see is that this is a finite dimensional algebra 